Hey everybody, welcome to the first episode of Dev Deadly. My name is Colby Thomas. Today I'm excited to share with you a project that I've been working on for a bit now, which is a Next.js Magic Link template. Um, I think this is a great starter project uh, to use in your own projects, but also just to tinker around with, dive in, kind of understand the fundamentals of this magic passwordless authentication pattern a little bit better. Uh, as for this video, I'm gonna go pretty quickly, gonna try to keep it pretty high level um, authentication specific to kind of help you get your feet wet, understand um, what that flow looks like. I will leave the GitHub uh, to this project in the description, so feel free to uh, pull it down, take a look at it, give it a star. Um, but yeah, I'll try not to waste your time, let's dive in. All right, first things first, let's take a look at the actual app. So this is it, it's called Magic. It is uh, pretty simple. When you land on the app for the first time, it'll redirect you to the uh, to the auth route. Uh, let's go ahead and enter my email and get this magic link sent. So real quick, I wanted to point out, me entering my email there is the same flow as it would be if I was signing in for the first time or if I was logging in for the 10th time. Um, with the magic link passwordless authentication system, your access to the app is through the email. So. It, it that's one nice thing is it 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 takes the load off of like setting up a a, a login route and a register route uh, you can kind of just do it all in in one go so let's take a look at my email this is a, a link from a while ago I'm just gonna use this as an example so um, I do want to call out this URL though so I, it says click on the link below to sign in if we look at the route um, it's slash API slash auth slash token the token slash verify. So what this is going to do is this is going to um, to send us to this this API endpoint and our backend is going to validate this verification token to see if it matches what's in the system. When I when I sent that email for the first time, it sent my AP, my email credential to the backend. It created a verification token for that email. If we actually look in the database, we can see what that looks like. So Holby a dev deadly. This is the token. This is when it expires. I have it expire in 24 hours. Uh, so if I click this link, it's going to validate that this token exists in the back end and I should be logged in. So let's go ahead and click this. All right, cool. So I'm taken to uh, this new profile page because I'm authenticated. Um, let's go ahead and add some, add some details. So Colby Thomas, I think I've got an old profile photo. Um, let's just enter some dummy paragraph. And then cool, this is my this is my user page, right? Oh, I didn't mention, there's this little globe icon up here. You can click on this to see all of the users on the app. Um, this is my user, obviously, so if I navigate to it, um, I throw the edit icon in here just to kind of make it so you don't have to go to the profile page if you wanna edit your information. Um, but yeah, so that's the app. So let's kind of take a look at uh, the two types of um, kind of authentication, um, let's call them, um, Let's call them like avenues. There's authenticating on a client side rendered uh, route, and there's authenticating on a server side rendered route. Server side rendered route. Um, so let's let's dive into let's dive into client side um, authentication first. So with client side authentication, the app the app does all of the all of the the bundling on on the client, right? So when I land on the page for the first time, um, it's going to it's going to check my cookies in this pattern. Let me pull open my cookies. Um, these ones are from something else. I can get rid of those. So it's gonna see this access token and this refresh token. This access token is short-lived as it should be. I think I have it lasting 15 minutes. Um, the reason that you want these to be short-lived is in the event somebody gains like illicit access to an access token, you wanna give their, their attack window you want to minimize that. Um, you can't revoke an access token because it, you know, it lives on their on their browser. But you can revoke a refresh token by deleting it from the database so that when it gets looked up, it's not found. Um, so let's just real quick let's simulate what would happen if I uh, if I delete this access token. So let me open up the network tab. I'm going to refresh. Actually, this page. Whoops, this page is server side rendered. Um, let's go to uh, what page is not server side rendered. I don't think this page is server side rendered. Let's take a look. So I'm gonna, um, let's go to this page. I don't think this one is. I'm gonna refresh the page and we can see that there was a call to this refresh endpoint. And now I have an access token again. I'll just do that again. Refresh the page. 
I've got an access token. So what happened here? When this page loaded, um, I made a silent refresh attempt with the refresh token that I that I have to the endpoint to see if I can get an access token. The reason I want an access token is because I want to know if the user signed in, right? I want to be able to show their little profile icon up here that gives them the ability to go to their profile and log out. Um, you always want to know if your user is logged in, right? So the first thing that I'll that I'll do on a client side rendered page is call this refresh endpoint. Uh, if this refresh endpoint returns a token, which this return is actually not really necessary. It's the cookie that comes back on this return that gets set up here. Um, this is kind of unnecessary, but highlights highlights what this endpoint is doing. Um, if I if a refresh token is valid and it's able to find it, then it's going to return this access token, and 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 now I'm logged in. Now that's not the same on a server side rendered page. Let's take a look at that. So let me come to my profile page. This page is server side rendered. So again, I'm going to delete these. I'm going to remove my access token. And we're gonna see something different when I refresh this page. All right, so notice how a refresh um, network request was not made. And the reason that is, is because this page is, uh, all of the data comes comes from the server. But before the, the server sends me that data, it wants to know, do I even have access or credentials to, to, to get that data? So the server, first it checks to see if I have I, if I have an access token. If I do, then fine, like send, send the data for, um, based off the privileges that that access token and the user associated with that access token has. Um, but if, if the access token is not there, then all hope is not lost. Is there a refresh token? If there's not, then yeah, they're host. Don't, don't let them see the data that they're trying to access. But if there is a refresh token, see who it belongs to, see if that person has access to, to get the data that they're, they're requesting. And then, oh, by the way, when you're sending that data back, just give them a new access token. So that's what's happening here. I think that's it. Let me let me just real quick demonstrate what would happen if I didn't have either of these. So let me refresh this page, and you can see that it takes me right to the auth page as a, um, telling me that I need to sign in. Uh, so I think that's I think that's it. That's client side rendering. That's server side rendering. Um, next things next thing to do would be actually to see how this is implemented. So uh, let me pull up in the code. All right. So I'm going to navigate to the app. All right. Whoops. Okay, so let's think. The first page that we looked at was users index. Um, it was this page. So this is the page that is uh, client side rendered. And you might say, wait, what do you mean? I see get server side prop right there. And that's a fair point. This page is server side rendered. The data that's coming back um, is actually fetched from the server, but the part that is not server side rendered is the actual authentication. Um, the authentication piece, I should say, is not is not does not happen on the server. Um, so, and and I mean this makes sense. Let's say I wanted to make this page um, have like good SEO. I just wanted to be able to uh, have it be crawled and actually return data by Google. Then um, getting the user's information on that page on load is going to be is going to be important. Uh, but in this case, that is not what happens. Um, so let's take a look at what happens. Let me think. Um, where does this happen? Oh yeah, it happens in auth context. Okay, so in auth context, um, I have a method here. Let me go down to my use effect down here. Uh, I can get rid of that, that's embarrassing. <laughs> okay, uh, so yeah, so this method um, is going to get called when the page first loads when or when the app first loads. It's going to look to see, hey, is there an access token? If there is, get the user off of the access token, hydrate the user, which just means um, oftentimes access tokens, well, access tokens shouldn't have all of the information on the user. They should just have like pertinent information, like a, the ID for sure. And then maybe like a name or, um, you know, an image or something. Um, so hydrate the user, get get more information off them, set the, uh, set the auth state to authenticated. If there's not an access token, then let's do a client side refresh. Now you might say like, whoa, why don't we just look for a refresh token? And there's an important distinction between the access token and the refresh token. The refresh token is actually HTTP only, which means you can't check for it. It only, it only, um, it's it's only readable, um, like you can't read it in the browser. So I need to send it to the server to be able to see if if there even is a refresh token. So I always have to make this request on a client side, uh, on a client side page if I didn't do the authentication on the server. So let's dive into this method. All right. Oh. Where am I? Whoops. Okay. Yeah. So 
it's going to make a request to this API auth token refresh endpoint. We'll look at that in a second. Uh, it's going to look to see if an access token came back. If the access token did come back, then it's going to extract the um, the user off of that access token and then do the same logic that we saw earlier. I think I spoke earlier and said that the access token return doesn't actually do anything. I might have misspoke there. It either does or I pull it off the cookie. One 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 of the two things. Um, let me think. Oh no, it 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 does. I'm just choosing to read it off the off the request uh, or off of the response, not necessarily off the cookie. I think you could do it either way. Um, but let's take a look at the refresh endpoint. So token refresh. All right, so it's a get method. It's going to pull the refresh refresh token off the cookies if there is one. If there is, um, then it's going to perform this logic. If there is not, it's going to just throw a 400, say success false. Um, but first thing is it going to do? It's going to try to it's going to hit this method try token refresh. So if we pull that up, we can see that it's going to try to look for the refresh token in the database. Um, if it finds one, it's going to pull a user object off of it. Um, if there is a user, it's going to sign an access token for that user, and it's going to return the access user access token in the user. Um, it's going to strip, then strip the access token off of that uh, response. It's going to set a cookie. It's going to then uh, send a 200 with that access token, and then with that access token. Wait, did I just go to the same place? Oh yeah, with that access token, it's then going to do what I showed you earlier, which is um, extract the user ID off of it, hydrate the user, and set the user as authenticated in state. Sorry, I know that was really long-winded, um, but that's that's client-side rendering. Server-side rendering is a little bit more tedious, but it's it's not too bad. Um, so let's dive let's dive into that now. I believe earlier the server-side rendered page that I demoed was the uh, profile page. So let's open that up and you'll notice something a little bit different. So still a get server side props as we had on the client side page. Again, it was server side rendered for some of the data, but the actual authentication um, auth user part was not, which you can, it can, it can't be, you kind of get to make your own rules, um, determine what's best for your application. But in this sense, in this case, I do want to uh, get the auth user from the, from the, um, from the cookies if I can and send it back um, before I load the page. So. Uh, it's going to take the context from this get server side props. It's going to call this method get auth user from cookies. Um, so let's see let's see what this method does. All right, so it de uh, deconstructs user off of um, this method. Let's take a look at what this method does. Okay, so it looks like it takes the cookies off of the uh, context. It's going to check to see if there's an access token. We're kind of familiar with that. If there is, it's going to verify it. Um, if it doesn't throw any errors, it's going to take the user ID off of it. If there is user ID, it's going to get the user by the ID, and then it's going to return that to the app to then be displayed for the profile. Um, otherwise, it's going to throw an error. We're just going to catch it because at this point, it's okay if it throws an error um, because there's still the last hope with the refresh token. So let's see if there's a refresh token. Oh, there's not your host. Uh, get out of here. Um, but if there is a refresh token, we're going to try. I think this is the one we just looked at, this try token refresh. Yeah, we already looked at this. Um, so that's going to return the access token in the user. Um, and then it's going to set the access token. Um, sorry, yeah, it's going to set the access token on this cookie, and then it's going to return the user. And then, bada bing, bada boom, you have what you need. It returns again, and it returns the propped auth user and the cookie. So now you're logged in, and that's really great. Um, there was something else. Oh yeah, logout. Let's take a quick look at logout. I think I called it sign out, which is stupid. I should <laughs> probably make that consistent. Um, okay, so this this sign out uh, API method is what gets called when the user clicks the logout button on the app, and it's really simple. All it does is it um, it sets the cookie, so it takes the access token cookie that you may or may not have, um, and it's going to set it to have expired. I think that's a millisecond or a second ago. Um, same thing with the refresh token. This is just a, a good way to to delete. Um, to delete cookies and then it's gonna send you back and then you won't have your access token, you won't have your refresh token um, and it'll send you to uh, the auth page or wherever you have it redirect. Um, I do wanna find real quick, let me let me look at the uh, verify token endpoint. So this is the endpoint that got hit uh, when we clicked on that email and I just wanted to show you uh, real quick what that looks like. So there's this verification token that gets created. We talked about this. Um, or sorry, so the token's gonna come off of the query. We're gonna look for the verification token in the database. If there is, then uh, we're gonna delete it as a cleanup. We're gonna take the email that was associated with the verification token object that was in the database. Uh, 
with that email, we're going to find the user. If there's a user, we're going to, if there's not a user, oh, this is important. If there's not a user, that's fine. That just means that the user hasn't logged in before they're creating themselves for the first time. So just bare bones, give them an ID, give them an email, and then, um, you know, choose when you log them in for the next time. Like you might want to prompt like, Hey, let's fill out your account for the first time, because you can tell by this payload that they're here for the first time. Um, but this is what I wanted to show. So here we're creating the access token. Uh, just with some like basic information, ID, email name, image URL. Um, for the purpose of this act app, these are actually unnecessary. I'm just throwing them, them on to kind of give like the access token a little bit more um, value if I inspected it. Um, but then the refresh token, this is important. So this is what I wanted to go over. So the refresh token gets created in the database. Again, it consists of a token, a user ID, um, and when it expires. Uh, but it's a set cookie where we get to see the difference between the access token cookie and the refresh token cookie. Again, it's this HTTP only. So let me pull up in the app. Do I still have it? Okay, sweet. And um, I just wanted to show, so I don't think I actually, I logged out, so I don't have anything, but um, with the refresh token, the difference is, is with the access token, I could say document.cookie and I could see the access token here. With a refresh token, because it's HTTP only, you would not be able to see that. Um, that's really all I wanted to call out there. <sighs> Sorry, I know I'm really fast. Uh, I'll try to slow down for future videos. But yeah, I think that's it. I think that's really all there is to this authentication pattern. Uh, please feel free to leave comments in the YouTube description if there's something I glossed over, as I'm sure I did. Um, and again, yeah, GitHub uh, repo is in the description. Uh, would love for you to check it out. Uh, pull it down, tinker around with it, um, create an issue if you find something. Um, but yeah, uh, stay tuned for the next video. Thanks, everybody. See ya.